Today we're going to be taking down the big lie when it comes to the CFM of carburetors and their actual ratings. Now misrepresenting a carburetor has been a common practice for the last, I don't know, 50, 70 years. And it's not just a carburetor thing or a car thing in general. You can see the common practice in refrigerators and air conditioning systems and even blenders when you're buying them. Something will be rated at, let's say, 13,000 RPM and it's actually 13,500 or 14,000 RPM. When it comes down to carburetors, it's the exact same thing. Right here, I've got a 350, a 500, a 600, and a 650 carburetor. The only reason I know that they're 350, 500, 600, and 650 is because the numbers on the side told me so, or there's a big stamp on the side of it that lets me know that I'm getting the carburetor that I asked for. Where things get a little bit muddy is that when you're actually comparing two very similar carburetors and one is rated at let's say 650 and the other one is rated at 600. Or in this case, one is rated at 350 and one is rated at 500. So we all know that the two barrel carburetors are measured differently than the four barrel carburetors. And as you can see, I've already cut this one out so I can demonstrate some stuff a little bit later on. And if we go ahead and take some measurements, we're going to find that the Venturi size that's right here and the throttle blade size that's over here is going to be the same between this four barrel and the two barrel counterpart. But like I mentioned, two barrels are rated differently. So if you take this 350 CFM and you use two of them, that should be 700 CFM, but it's not. And we know that it's not because we took the same carburetor and this one's actually a 500 CFM. If we cut this one in half, it should be 250 CFM, but this one says that it's 350. These things are fairly obvious when you start measuring, but it actually gets even worse. If you go ahead and you take the numbers off of a factory carburetor right here on the choke horn, and you compare it to the Holly Manufacturing Guide, this 500 CFM carburetor actually comes out to a 600. Because if you take an original Holly carburetor that still has a choke horn, it has a series of numbers here up in the front and those numbers will dictate typically the size of the carburetor and the trim of the carburetor, like jetting, IFR size, and things like that. Not all of the information's out there, but if you can go through the guide and start comparing measurements, you can more or less figure out where you're supposed to land. Now, if we take this 500 CFM carburetor that we cut up, you can see that I actually wrote 600 underneath it, and that's because if you take the number and you compare it to the data sheet, this carburetor was a factory installed carburetor in the 70s onto the Dodge Motorhomes with the 413 engine. And if you look up that carburetor, it comes back as a 600 CFM carburetor. If you try to find this carburetor in the Holly data book, this carburetor does not show up. There is a carburetor with the same Venturi size with different throttle blade size, and that measures at like 450 or 475. And then there's another carburetor which has the bigger Venturi and the smaller throttle blade, and that measures at around 550. So if we start canceling out some of the numbers, this will end up being more or less a 500 CFM carburetor, even though officially it's actually a 600. But if you take this 600 and you compare it to this 600, you're gonna find out a couple things. The first is that the throttle blade size is actually exactly the same. If we take the gasket that belongs to this one, it fits perfectly. And if we take the gasket and put it on this one, it fits perfectly. And if we take the gasket and put it on the two barrel, it actually does fit pretty darn good. But if we go ahead and take a measurement, I like to use sockets and then measure them out. If we take the socket and we fit it in through the Venturi, you're gonna see that it's a pretty close match. If we take the socket onto the other 600 and we fit it through the Venturi, we're not even close. Let's see if I can get this on camera. We are completely off and we've got plenty of room on the sides. So how is it that this is a 600 and this smaller one is also a 600? And the answer is both marketing and probably something else. Considering that this is a factory installed carburetor, Dodge probably realized that they needed something that provided a little bit more atomization, but they didn't want to lose on the CFM. So it looks like Holly made them kind of a hybrid carburetor that not only had the smaller Venturi size, but the booster design is also different. If you look inside, you can see that we're missing parts of the boosters here. I didn't cut these parts of the boosters out. 
These parts were already missing from the factory. I cut this side so I can demonstrate what it looks like on the inside. But the chunks missing on the bottom here, these were actually missing on the factory carburetors. And as far as I know for the reason is that so that the carburetor can distribute fuel better in the intake manifold that it was set up. I'm assuming because Holly didn't really have an off the shelf version of this carburetor, they really just gave it the 600 CFM nameplate out of simplicity versus an actual marketing tactic. Now throughout the years, things have kind of standardized. You don't really have this situation anymore. Typically, if it says a 650, it'll have a certain Venturi size, a certain throttle blade size. But again, things do get a little bit crazier. So the main body on the left is a 650. The main body on the right, if you take a measurement off the Venturi size and the throttle blade size, it's gonna come out to be a 650. Where things get complicated is that when you look on top, you're gonna notice that the booster size is actually a little bit different. So these are four annular boosters in the Demon carburetor. And then these are down leg boosters in the Proform carburetor. And these right here are straight leg boosters on the 500, 600 CFM cutaway that we just looked at. Now, what does it matter what type of booster is in the main bodies if we already know that it's a 650, right? Well, the thing is that people say that if you install a down leg booster, the carburetor is going to get better signal and it tends to flow more. So the 750s that came factory installed with down leg boosters were marketed as 780 carburetors. And what the internet also says is that the annular boosters are so large that they actually take up space from the CFM and they bring that number down. If that's true, this 650 is actually a 550 CFM. And in fact, Demon actually sold this carburetor as a 575 CFM carburetor, even though it's a 650 main body. But because of the size of the annular boosters, they decided to bring that number down. They also have a different version of this called the Speed Demon 625. And that is the same exact carburetor with down leg boosters in the front and annular boosters in the back. And from there, it gets a little bit crazier because Proform actually sells the 750 with down leg boosters, the 750 with bigger down leg boosters for their E85, the 750 with different down leg boosters for alcohol, and finally their 750 with annular boosters. So considering what we just talked about, some of those carburetors should be rated at 780, some of those carburetors should be rated at 730, and that 750 with four annular boosters should be rated at 650 or 675. But I'm gonna tell you guys that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The only thing you need to pay attention is the Venturi size, the throttle blade size, and the type of booster that you need. And if you're not sure, you can go ahead and reach out here in the comments down below or to a reputable carburetor builder, and they're gonna be able to point you in the right direction. So try not to get caught up in this whole CFM debacle. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, signing out.